Welcome to planet Earth. As a boy, I spent a lot of time in places just like this. And now I'm a biologist. It occurred to me that there are millions and millions of children like me that perhaps live in cities, love this planet, but have no access to it the way we do. So at Wild Science, we got together and we designed a series of micro worlds that capture the best of the green planet and could take it into the houses of those children across the world, in the cities, no matter where they live. So how did we do it? Come with me on a little tour. I'm on my way uphill to an exposed part of the forest because the things that live up there are very different from the things that live down there. And here we are in upland forest. Just take a look at the plants around here. For instance, this one, tiny little waxy spiny leaves. And if you crush them, they smell like insect spray. These strappy, waxy leaves, very, very, very sharp. Again, to avoid attack by insects and other animals. Now, life is pretty harsh up here in the upland forest. But this forest is also home to one of the most important animals on our planet. They live in the trees behind me. And they live in this dry, sandy soil under my feet. They are the ants. Now, no micro world for children would be complete without one of the most important inhabitants in this forest and any other part of the planet, ants. Now I'd like to go lower down in the valley to where there's more protection from the wind, there is less sun, the humidity is higher, and the plants and the animals are different. Oh, wow. Here we are in the lowland forest. And I found something rather special. See this white patch here? This is a lichen. It's a combination of a fungus and an alga, and it's not hurting the tree at all. The way it's growing, curling up off the tree, tells me there is very little air pollution in here. Scientists use this as a biological indicator for air pollution. Wouldn't it be great if we put some of this into one of our micro worlds to keep track of air quality. But I'm heading further off down the valley. Here we are. You could call this the dead center of the forest. Here in the lowlands where it's wet and cool, this giant tree is rotting away. This is an ironwood tree. A few years ago, even a chainsaw would have had trouble cutting this wood but now it's soft and becoming soil again. Why? Because inside this stick are tens of thousands of microorganisms to turn this monster of the forest, this ironwood tree, back into the soil from which it came. Now here we are on the floor of the lowland forest, just under the surface, burying these leaves, the earthworms, along with ants, possibly the most influential creatures on the face of this planet. This is the ultimate gardener, and it's this earthworm that gives fertility to the soil by burying leaves and creating drainage channels for water to run away. This little animal surely deserves a place in one of our micro worlds. Now the plants here are very different from those in the upland forest. Just look at the foliage, just look at those leaves, big, broad and soft, and everything here is wet. It's wet and cold. The air down here is cold, the air is humid, and so the humidity condenses out on the leaves of these plants and keeps them moist. The humidity condenses and rolls down the leaves, down the stems, onto the ground and into the creek. And that's where I'm going now. Now here we are at the creek. It's very small, but it's very, very important. You can see on the rocks here there are lichens growing, but at the base of the stream it runs so fast and there is so much gravel and sand brought down that it's cleaned any life off the bottom of the stream. But look, right here on the banks, green here, is nearly all mosses. 
and even more special are these little flat, insignificant green plates. These are called liverworts. They mean that the water here is extremely pure. They are another biological indicator, like the lichens for air, we can use liverworts for water. And on the table in front of me, I have the cycle of life in this forest laid out. Here are the green plants. What do they do? They make oxygen and they make food. There's food here for little biting insects that have eaten the leaves. These flowers, the ants, they love the nectar that they can get from these flowers. And of course, the green moss is home for thousands of little creatures down by the creek. But when these die, they become an even more important food source for thousands of other organisms. For instance, worms just love the fallen leaves. They draw these fallen leaves and flowers down into the soil. So ants and worms between them, very important organisms. Then we move even further down the scale. This is the great hidden kingdom of fungi. There's an iron wood stick here that is gradually being broken down by fungi. And what happens next? Over here, a few years later, after treatment by all these different organisms, we get this, a piece of iron wood that I can crush in my hand, becomes soil, and the cycle can begin again. And here we have the wild science micro worlds. We call all of these kits the ecosystem because they all fit together. Over here, we have ant kits for beginners. Here is an ant mine. Here is an ant jungle. They mimic how ants live in the wild. On my left, this is the antosphere system. It's a reconstruction of how leafcutter ant colonies build up underground with chambers and tunnels. It's for professional myrmecologists. So children can graduate from one to another. Here is the worm farm, a very natural environment for worms. And all these animals can be connected to what we call the mothership, the ecodome. And in here, we have different levels of jungle with lakes and rivers and waterfalls connecting them. If you'd like to discover more about the innermost workings of these kits, just check out the rest of the ecosystem videos.